Amy Lou Adams was born on August 20, 1974, to American parents Richard and Catherine Adams, when her father was stationed with the United States Army at the Caserma Aderling Military Complex in Vicenza, Italy. She is the middle of seven children, with four brothers and two sisters. After moving from one army base to another, Adams' family settled in Castle Rock, Colorado, when she was eight. After leaving the army, her father sang professionally in nightclubs and restaurants. Adams has described going to her father's shows and drinking Shirley Temples at the bar as among her fondest childhood memories. The family was poor, they camped and hiked together, and performed amateur skits usually written by her father and sometimes by her mother. Adams was enthusiastic about the plays and always played the lead. Adams was raised as a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints until her parents divorced in 1985 and left the church. She did not have strong religious beliefs, but is said that she valued her upbringing for teaching her love and compassion. After the breakup, her father moved to Arizona and remarried, while the children remained with their mother. Her mother became a semi-professional bodybuilder who took the children with her to the gym when she trained. Adams has compared her uninhibited early years with her siblings to Lord of the Flies. Describing herself as a scrappy, tough kid, she has said she fought frequently with other children. Adams attended Douglas County High School. She was not academically inclined, but was interested in the creative arts and sang in the school choir. She competed in track and gymnastics, harbored ambitions of becoming a ballerina, and trained as an apprentice at the local David Taylor Dance Company. She disliked high school and kept mostly to herself. After graduation, she and her mother moved to Atlanta, Georgia. She did not go to college, which disappointed her parents, and she later regretted not pursuing higher education. At age 18, Adams realized she was not gifted enough to be a professional ballerina, and found musical theater more to her taste. One of her first stage roles was in a community theater production of Annie, which she did on a volunteer basis. To support herself, she worked as a greeter at a Gap store. She also worked as a waitress at Hooters, but left the job after she saved enough money to buy a used car. Amy Adams' Personal Life, Relationships and Dating Adams met actor and painter Darren Legallo at an acting class in 2001, and they began dating a year later while collaborating on a short film named Pennies. They became engaged in 2008, and she gave birth to their daughter, Aviana, in 2010. Seven years after their engagement, the couple married in a private ceremony at a ranch near Santa Barbara, California. Adams said in 2016 that she appreciates the numerous sacrifices Lou Gallo had made as the primary caregiver for their family. They live in Beverly Hills, California. Adams has described her family life as pretty low-key, and has said that her routine involves going to work, taking her daughter to the park, and having weekly date nights with her husband. Adams finds little value in celebrity, and maintains that the more that people know about me, the less they'll believe me and my characters. She attracts little gossip or tabloid attention, and strives to keep a healthy work-life balance. Adams makes an effort to remain unaffected by her fame, believing that it would hinder her ability to play roles with honesty. She has spoken about suffering from insecurity and lack of confidence from a young age and about how motherhood had made her calmer. She frequently breaks into song when stressed at work. Adams has joined other actors in calling for equal pay for women in the film industry, but she finds that actresses are too often asked to explain the gender pay gap and feels the question should be directed instead to producers. Having experienced difficulty in her early years in the film industry, Adams works closely with under privileged students at New York City's Ghetto Film School. Variety honored her for her work with them in 2010. She supports the Trevor Project, a non-profit organization that helps troubled LGBT teenagers, and served as a presenter for the 2011 event Trevor Lev. In 2013, she launched the book The Beauty Book for Brain Cancer to help raise money for brain cancer charities Snog and Head Rush. The following year, she attended a charity event at the UCLA Medical Center, Santa Monica, to raise funds for sexually abused children. In 2020, Adams teamed with the actress Jennifer Garner to launch a campaign named Hashtag Save With Stories to promote children's education during school closures due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Career 
Amy Adams started working as a dancer for several theater companies in 1995. She received her big break when she moved to Minnesota in order to work for the Chanhassen Dinner Theater. It was during this time that she decided to give Hollywood a shot. In 1999, Amy Adams auditioned for a role in the film Drop Dead Gorgeous and was successful in landing the role. The film wasn't a success and Adams relocated to Los Angeles, which proved to be a good move as she landed a role in the Fox TV series Manchester Prep. However, the show did not last long. In 2000, Amy Adams started acting in several popular TV series like The West Wing and Buffy the Vampire Slayer, among others. Two years later, she was cast by Steven Spielberg to play a pivotal role in the Leonardo DiCaprio star Catch Me If You Can. In 2005, Adams landed a role in the movie Junebug. Her role in the film, which was directed by Phil Morrison, was praised by the critics and she went on to win several awards for playing Ashley John's 10 in the film. Her performance in Junebug landed her several other roles in films like The Wedding Date, 2005, Standing Still, 2005, Talladega Nights, 2006, and the commercially successful Disney film Enchanted, 2007. In 2007, Amy Adams acted alongside popular Hollywood actors like Tom Hanks and Seymour Hoffman in the movie Charlie Wilson's War. The following year, she appeared as the female lead in the film Sunshine Cleaning. In 2008, Amy Adams was cast in the role of Sister James in the film Doubt, which also starred actors like Seymour Hoffman and Meryl Streep. Adams' performance was praised by the critics and audiences alike. It did not come across as a surprise when she was nominated for Best Supporting Actress at prestigious awards ceremonies, such as the Academy Awards and Golden Globe Awards for her role in Doubt. The year 2009 was a particularly productive year for Adams as she first starred in the hugely successful film Night at the Museum 2, Battle of the Smithsonian alongside Ben Stiller. She then teamed up with Meryl Streep for the movie Julie v. Julia. Amy Adams' performance in the film was appreciated by leading film critics at the time. From 2010 onwards, Adams started working in a number of successful films, such as Leap Year and The Fighter. Her performances earned her rave reviews. She was nominated under the Best Supporting Actress category at many award ceremonies, such as BAFTA, Academy Award, Screen Guild Awards and Golden Globe Awards. During the same period, she was also nominated for several awards for her performance in the film The Master. In 2013, Amy Adams became a part of the ensemble cast for the film American Hustle. Her role as a con artist earned her the Golden Globe Award for Best Supporting Actress. The following year, she received the Golden Globe Award for Best Actress for her performance in the movie Big Eyes. From 2016 to 2018, Amy was cast in many films like Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice, Arrival, Nocturnal Animals, Justice League, and Vice. In 2018, she played the role of Camille Preaker, an alcoholic reporter discharged from a psychiatric hospital, in the HBO miniseries Sharp Objects. The same year, she joined the cast of an American mystery thriller drama film titled The Woman in the Window. On April 2019, she was cast to play Bev Vance in a film titled Hillbilly Elegy, which is based on J.D. Vance's memoir of the same name, 